Hi, I'm Todd James. Hi, I'm Lenore LeMay. And this is Program Pride. Well, Lenore, welcome to Program Pride. Thanks. It's great to have a co-host sit here, so welcome. Uh, on today's show, we're going to be dealing with uh, resources that you can access in the gay, lesbian, and bisexual community through newspapers, magazines, uh, the web, uh, the internet, I guess, and telephone. There's a lot of information that we're going to be providing you, so this would be a good time to pop a tape in your VCR so that you can make sure you don't have to write anything down. Yeah, and, and jumping right into the show, we're going to go to an interview that I did in Edmonton uh, at Boys Town Cafe with uh, Lisa Passine uh, talking about the AIDS Network of Edmonton fundraiser, the Black and White Affair. Every year around February, early March, there's an event that happens in Edmonton, an area called the Black and White Affair. And it's one time in the year when you and all of your friends and your family can get all dolled up in tucks and ties or in creative black and white wear. And you can attend a gala event for cheap, for an inexpensive rate. Perhaps it's a better word. And joining me today on Program Pride is Lisa Pacine, who's the special events coordinator for the Black and White Affair this That's year. That's right. Now, the Black and White Affair um, supports the AIDS Network of Edmonton Society for education and support. Support services, that's right. Great. And uh, Lisa, how important are fundraisers becoming for, for AIDS-related organizations? I think um, fundraising events are actually becoming important for all types of non-for-profit organizations, but for the AIDS Network, it is becoming really important. Um, governments continue to cut back their funding, so they have to rely more on fundraising events and um, individuals uh, donating to the organization. So, yeah, the fundraising events are really important now. No, we, we've seen the transition because this is what, the seventh annual Black yep. and White Affair? Yep. That's incredible. I know, it's come a long way. And, and how has it come? I mean, it, it used to be a smaller event. I it, can remember the first or second year it was held at a, a local club. And yeah, I think it was held at Flashbacks yeah. for the first couple of years um, and it's really uh, progressed and evolved into quite a big event that um, involves everybody and that's really what the black and white affair um, is about we want to make the event accessible to everyone from young to old for people who can maybe not afford that much to people who have lots of money and can help support it by involving themselves in the silent auction buying balloons during the balloon project those sorts of things but with a ticket price of $25 anybody can really afford to come out and have some fun so if that's all you can, you can afford save your pennies and exactly <laughs> come out enjoy the evening and you've made your donation what you can so um, every year uh, there's different components too. Like you said, there's a silent auction. Last year you had those fabulous people running around selling balloons yeah, everywhere. Yeah, that's right. And uh, there's always entertainment as well. That's right. And uh, any idea who will be entertaining this year? This year um, we're bringing back the Kit Kat Club. They oh, were excellent. so popular last year. We've never seen the dance floor so packed and we've had tons of calls from people saying, bring them back they were lots of fun and, so and that sax player is pretty good oh yes yeah. Dave Baker is pretty great um, so we have the Kit Kat Club back again um, and we're looking for another band right now um, which will be have. confirmed oh, fairly yeah. soon fairly soon exactly and, and this year it looks like it's going to be in early March mm -hmm. we're looking at probably March 8th uh, is the date and, and once again the black and white affair will occur at Commerce Place in it downtown is at Edmonton. Commerce Place again uh, we do have our major sponsors back on board Syncrude and Canadian Utilities so we're really pleased to have them back excellent yeah and and um, 
what other, are there any new additions that may be planned or well, we have, in the works? We have the uh, silent auction component, which is always really popular. There's over, we do about 65 items, but they're worth valued at 250 and over. So and sometimes you can get a good deal. Oh yeah, like we have art and jewelry and a couple of trips and uh, just some really creative fun items like a uh, martini party at your home for, for Lola's for 10 of your friends. Which would be <laughs> just for you. <laughs> That's what I'm getting on. <laughs> um, and so there's and Lisa's birthday is close to that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have the silent auction component. There will be the balloon project again, which was extremely popular last year, where you can buy a balloon for $20, and there's something in the balloon valued at $40 or more. And we just have tons of things donated from people all over the city and companies and businesses. And those balloons sold like in 10 minutes. It was incredible. So swarms of people. Swarms of people going after these balloons. So we will do that again. And um, there will be some other little fun things. We have a couple of martini bars happening. Lola's is doing one and Selex is doing one. So there's a, a bit the of The battle component. of the martinis. That's right. <laughs> so you have it, the Black and White Affair, occurring in early March in Edmonton at Commerce Place in downtown Edmonton. Call the AIDS Network, 488-5742 for more information. Lisa, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doc. And we're back in the studio, and joining us today is someone who usually isn't in front of the camera for Program Pride, someone who's usually behind the scenes. Joining us in the studio is the cre creator and producer of Program Pride, Michael Lobotus. Welcome to Program Pride. Welcome. Well, thank you. I'm always here. <laughs> so, Michael, can you tell us, how did Program Pride get started? Back in 1994, at the Alberta Summit in Red Deer, I had this idea that maybe the community should advance onto a television show. So I got a bunch of people together at a workshop there and gauged the uh, response of the community and it was quite good. So I had talked to Shaw Cable here in Red Deer about starting the show and they were all gung-ho as well. But I wanted to make sure that I had enough volunteers firmed up before I would start filming. So I spent the next year getting my volunteers all lined up. And in October of 1995, we went into the studio and produced our first show. So we've been on the air for over a year now. Right. Wow. Something that, that always amazes me is the fact that uh, we always hear comments about Alberta being um, uh, not quite as progressive as some other provinces. How diplomatic of you. And, uh, but yet, something like this, which I is something that's almost uh, a first for Canada, there's a, a provincial-wide gay, lesbian, bisexual show that comes out of a small community like, like Red Deer. I was wondering what some of the responses were like uh, from the TV stations when you first approached them. Shaw Red Deer was great. You know, they gave me all the information I needed and said, come back and we'll do the show. Mm -hmm. And But I wanted to make sure it was provincial in focus first because there's not enough information and not enough people in Red Deer willing to go on the air. So I wanted to get Shaw Edmonton and Shaw Calgary on board before we went. We went, and uh, they picked us up right away. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And uh, how has the response been from the public? Public has been overall good. Um, you get the occasional phone call from somebody who's screaming about the faggots on the air, but uh, they're a regular viewer. They're a regular <laughs> viewer because they phone every week, so we know that we have those. But um, really, it's been positive, even from people traveling through Alberta. We've had comments from them phoning into Shaw saying, "Hey, I saw this. This is great for Alberta." You know, because they're coming from Toronto and they don't even have it in Toronto. So, that's really good. Um, Michael, <coughs> in your view, what does Program Pride need to keep going? To keep going? Well, we need volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, we have the regular turnover of volunteers, as any organization does. So, anyone who's interested, we can use them. Um, you don't need any experience. I didn't know anything about television when I started this, and neither did anybody else except for our director. And... Um, we need uh, people to phone into Shaw, especially because we're just carried on the Shaw network right now, and say, please keep carrying this. This is a good show. We appreciate it. And we need the communities in Edmonton and Calgary especially to do that. Calgary has been a wonderful, Calgary Shaw has been wonderful in supporting us. They have given us an associate producer. They give us equipment. They send a cameraman out to do shoots in e Calgary. Edmonton, we haven't got to that point yet, but we're hoping to get that to that point within the next year. The other problem is we don't have half of Edmonton because half of Edmonton is um, served by Videotron, half is served by Shaw. 
So um, we need people in Edmonton to phone Videotron and say, hey, there's this gay program, we program Pride. We'd like to see it carried in this part of Edmonton. So that's what we really need is, is to be able to maintain our presence in the two cities. Okay. I understand that there's a viewer response number at the, at the end of each show. What, what can viewers do with that number? Um, I don't know if the viewer response number um, airs in every city. I know it does definitely in Calgary. I'm not sure what they do in Edmonton. But definitely phone in and say it's good because people are more likely to phone re response lines to complain about something. Mm, but we need right. the positive comments so that we can balance those people who are screaming about faggots on the air and get them off and they should all die and things like that. Nonsense. We need positive stuff going into this. Right. So if people are watching this and they really like it, they need to be calling Shaw in each of the cities to say, what a great show, and please keep it on the air, yeah. and we support it. Yeah, and we do have the numbers for our show, um, for our organizers in Edmonton and Calgary and here in Red Deer. We have their numbers run at the end of the show as well, and we'd appreciate hearing your comments and any constructive feedback that we could get. Great. Excellent. Well, T Todd, uh, Todd um, I understand that you've been a volunteer since the beginning. Tell us about your experience with this show. Um, hmm. <laughs> it's, it's been incredible and uh, for anyone out there who's watching, I would really encourage you that uh, if you want to come and, and volunteer, we're all volunteers and the casting crew are constantly changing. And it's a really positive, high energy dynamic and, and there are numbers for all of the contacts in the cities that will be coming up at the end of the show. Uh, please give us a call. We're also in all of the magazines, so uh, please give us a call and get involved. Uh, we need people in a bunch of different areas, and, and it'll be a great experience for you. Yeah. Good. So thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for uh, uh, having this vision and being able to push forward with it. I think that's incredible. Well, it's taken a lot of work on everybody's part, and I thank all of them as well. Great. Great. So up next, Lenore, we're going to be talking about uh, a whole bunch of resources because this is what the show is about, talking about, you know, stuff. So I thought maybe we could start out, and I have cheat notes. So I thought maybe we could start out with some of the television things. Uh, as we just talked about, Program Pride is showed in, shown in Red Deer and in Calgary and in Edmonton. Yeah. But uh, there are also some other television shows as well, um, such as Dyke TV which I've seen a few episodes of, is yeah, incredible. It, it comes from New York. Uh, there's also uh, one called Gay Entertainment TV, which is also out of New York. They're really into this uh, queer television things. Uh, and there's also Wolf Video, which is out of California, and they do a lot of um, gay, lesbian, um, transgendered video. And, and there's also resources like the National Film Board of Canada who really need our support. I mean, and they have videos that you can purchase or, or rent, and they have a 1-800 number as well to call. And there's the show that comes out of PBS Detroit. Um, in the Life. In the Life on Sunday right. nights, which yeah. is a good show as well. And there's also, um, they're not really resources, but there are a lot of uh, uh, shows, sitcoms and dramas that are portraying gay and lesbian and bisexual characters in a positive role. And right. I would encourage you all to write and to call them and say, that's incredible. Yeah. yeah support them. Um, there's also uh, telephone lines, which is great because everyone loves to talk on the phone and it's a great way to get information. A in Calgary they have extensions and it's a 24-hour touchstone community information service. Is that kind of like the Talking Yellow Pages where they'll give you a code and then you can put that in and then you'll yeah. get the information? Okay. It's like a queer talking pages. Right. Well in Edmonton you can call Glicky, which is the Gay and Lesbian Community Center. They have an info line and um, it's a recorded message of all the upcoming events and the different services that are available in Edmonton. And, uh, you know, there are tons of magazines, and we'll be talking about some of those in the next segment, such as QC and Extra and Times.10. Uh, there's also some... some Do you uh, have more phone lines for Calgary? No, I don't. Well, let me tell you more about phone lines for Edmonton. Um, at the U of A campus, there's the outreach number. Um, there's an, a lesbian lifeline in Edmonton. There's the O2 hotline, which is a recreational group, and the Pink Triangle Youth Group. And those are all great resources, and I would suggest you all to, to contact those, and those numbers will be coming up on the uh, show. And um, I think up next, boy, we have a lot of stuff that we haven't shared with you, and, and one of these things is QC Magazine, which is a magazine that's been around for about two years now out of Calgary. 
uh, and uh, we're going to be talking with uh, Sheila Anderson and uh, Michelle Harding, who's who are the um, co-publishers of that magazine. Mm -hmm. Right after this. And what you just saw were some examples of QC magazine, uh, magazine out of Calgary, uh, distributed throughout Canada now. And joining me in the studio is uh, Sheila Anderson, uh, co-publisher and creator of QC magazine, and her other co-publisher, uh, Michelle Hardy. Welcome to Program Pride. Thank you. Nice to be here. It's great to have you. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how QC came to be, the vision of how it started up. Um, in 94, I, upon returning from the Gay Games, I was inspired to contribute more to the community and went to the existing publication in Calgary, uh, Clue Magazine, mm -hmm. and worked as a photographer for Clue. Um, it was experiencing a change of ownership at that time, and uh, this gentleman picked it up from uh, the two previous gentlemen that were uh, publishing, publishing the, the magazine and worked on there for six months on, on the, the new revised Clue magazine. It subsequently folded in February of 95 and uh, based on, I guess, a passion to, to contribute and uh, uh, be a part of the community in, in, in that sort of aspect, um, Vicki Menzies and myself decided to put out a, a publication and through the course of February 95 to March we decided that our um, differences in uh, visions w were too too different to uh, continue working together, and she went off and formed uh, her publication, and I continued with QC. Excellent. So, let me get this straight: you both started QC in the beginning, or yes. it was still in the oh okay. no, we did. Um, originally, there was a, a plan to work together, but again, it was just differences of opinion, and she went and opened her magazine in May in 95, and I uh, started with QC, and, and uh, we're still rolling. <laughs> Excellent. Well, congratulations. And that's been two and a half years? Is that right? Well, it'll be about two years since, yeah. uh, since we started the, bowl, the ball rolling. Wow. And, and how has the magazine evolved over time? Evolved as, uh, in I mean, terms of what? Terms has, of it, has it changed? Since you, oh you yeah, I, I mean, you said, oh, I want to do a magazine, and this is what it should be like, and and then you know, you, I know you guys did a survey uh, a while ago, a, a reader response survey, and and you must be constantly getting feedback because, I mean, the magazine looks good. It's it looks improving really every good. issue. Yeah. I think that's something that uh, we've heard a lot of feedback, very positive results. Everyone has been very uh, supportive of the magazine. Um, when uh, I. Um, started QC and went and solicited for advertisers, being a complimentary magazine, you rely solely on your advertisers to, to for your revenue. Um, based on my name and reputation in the community, I was able to raise the funds to get our first publication out and uh, left the design and content primarily to other people, other people who were riding with me on the vision. and. Um, we came out a little flat, and I think we've improved ever since then, yeah. um, getting to where I think we're quite happy. Michelle came on board, actually by, um, I don't know, by accident. Oh, there's a story there's there. There's a right? really <laughs> good story there. She, uh, I solicited her as an advertiser. She had a, a natural health consulting business going, and uh, she I faxed her, and she promptly returned my call and said, uh, no, I, I'm not in position to advertise, but I will write for you. So we conversed on several several weeks before I was able to meet with her as a writer and uh, well the rest is history. Uh, <laughs> met her, I immediately fell in love and <laughs> coerced her into uh, and to help me with this project. Wow. Wow. <laughs> okay, but back to the magazine because that's another story. Maybe it is. It's a, it's a huge show. Meeting at first <laughs> glance. And so um, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the magazine. It has a little bit of a different uh, flow. We talked before and you were saying it's not a newspaper, it's a magazine. And I was wondering if maybe you could expand on that a little bit to talk about how, how you see the magazine being different than, than some of the, the newspapers that are out there, such as like Angles and the Extra Publications or Swerve or even, even Perceptions to a degree. The decision to be a magazine was actually um, at the community's request. 
I went out again in the earlier stages and solicited a several hundred people and said, what is it that you'd like to see in a, in a local publication? And the response was they wanted a size that they could, uh, they could handle, something to throw in their pocket, or, or they didn't want a tabloid format. Okay. They wanted um, the content, they wanted it to be, this was back in 95, so they wanted the content to be less political, mm -hmm. a little bit more uh, feature oriented. Well, and, and you describe it as a lifestyles magazine too. You know, so I, I guess part of that is it reaches a broad range of issues. Yes, yeah, and not and it was we were going to tackle issues, political issues, with a small p, um, <laughs> and to get away from the uh, um, and quoting from the community garbage of who was doing what to who and exactly. the, the negative not a aspects. Gossip, right? Yeah, the negative aspects of the community that was so prevalent in the previous. Um, Publications. Yes. Okay, I'd like to talk about something else too. There's a disclaimer in the magazine that talks about, oh, I'm going to have to find my notes again, <laughs> um, about that this, the people in, and businesses that are in this magazine uh, don't refer uh, or in any way apply any type of sexual orientation. I was wondering if you could briefly talk about why you felt the need to have a disclaimer. Well, I can answer that for you. Um, for any type of business, uh, there are policies and procedures that one has to have. So for liability purposes, you want some type of clause in there. The other thing we felt that was important, that labels, um, we don't agree with labeling, sure. and people just should be accepted for who they are. Uh, so it just points out that uh, pretty much everybody within the magazine are supportive regardless of their sexual orientation. Great, and you have been supportive. You're distributed in a whole bunch of places, you said in, in Victoria and Vancouver in Calgary and Edmonton and Red Deer. And you, you mentioned Toronto as well. Uh, some of the bookstores and, and magazine shops you're distributing in. I know you're in Orlando in Edmonton and 20 or 30 other locations. And, and in Calgary, uh, Books and Books is one. And you, are, how many places are you distributed? I think um, before we answer that, I think it's important to emphasize that we are in um, a lot of gay-owned and operated uh, establishments but we're uh, in a lot of straight establishments as well, and uh, the um, response has been very favorable in those establishments. Uh, we're in coffee shops and in bookstores and in bars, um, a variety of, again, gay-owned and operated as well as um, the Sandpiper Books. I'm, you know, I'm yeah. plugging so everybody. You're, so you're <laughs> everywhere, just the yeah, same yeah, as, yeah. as gay, yeah, lesbian, We sat down and people, wanted yeah. to, to cover the, the we are uh, central in Calgary, particularly mm -hmm. downtown locations, just due to the nature of the, the, of nature the neighborhood. Of well, there's tons more magazines here, and we have like a broad array of magazines and newspapers, and I encourage you all to uh, check out your local bookshops and magazine and newsstands, and even, even stuff like uh, Max and, and local corner stores, and if they don't carry them, ask them, and they can talk to their distributors and say, uh, you know, there's this magazine in Calgary. It's called QC. Uh, can you have it here? And uh, I'd like to thank you both very much for coming in and, and taking a few moments to share about your magazine and information. And I wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, take care. The Greater Edmonton Pride pages and Calgary's Unity pages, wow, they're just m more incredible resources. Uh, Calgary's new Unity pages will be hitting the streets very soon. Probably have a different cover. Please check it out. And the Edmonton Pride pages are going to be available sometime in June, so watch for them. Um, both pages have kindly um, put ads for Program Pride in for free, so support the Pride pages and the Unity pages. Excellent. Well, talking about resources, um, we both first met because we do community radio, yes. and we do queer community radio. Uh, we first met uh, on a show that's on CJSR, which is the Campus and Community Radio in Edmonton, mm -hmm. and the show's called uh, Gay Wire, yes. and uh, it's a uh, current affairs, what's up and coming, what new books are out, and things like that. And, and you do a segment called On a Queer Day. Yeah, Gay Wire is shown from 6 to 7 every Thursday night, or listened to 6 to 7 every thir Thursday night. Um, and it's an hour long. And within the Gay Wire format, a friend of mine named Brian and I do a segment called On a Queer Day. And we chat about current events, political issues, movies, books. Um, anything that's happening queer in and around Edmonton, so it's and real fun. And your dyke du jour. And our dyke du jour and our fag of the week that we, that we great select. Great segments, yeah. yeah. And you do? I do queries, which is on Wednesdays from 5.30 until 6 on CJSR again. 
um, and it's more of a, a news, current affairs, uh, half-hour uh, show with a, with a queer focus. As well, in Calgary, um, on CJSW, they do Speak Sebastian, and uh, another show called Freedom FM, and uh, that's with uh, Gene Rodman and uh, his crew, and they're just wonderful. And also in Edmonton on CJSR 88.5 FM, there's a feminist show called Adam and Eve that has some lesbian content and Sonic Sisters, which is lesbian music. Mm. Well, we've covered so much information today. It, it's just incredible. We have a few current events uh, coming up, but we hope that in some way we've been able to provide you with uh, just a tidbit of all the resources that are out there for you to get information and to access the various communities. It's really surprising to me that that we have so much, such a wealth of information and services available to us in in Alberta. Suzanne Westenhofer is going to be in Calgary on March 8th and March 9th in Edmonton, International Women's Day, March 8th. Chris Williamson tentatively is going to be here April 4. Laura Love, March 7. Jennifer Bears on April 4th. And so support these, uh, these entertainers as they come. And, and before we leave, one more thing. Edmonton Vocal Minority and the Dale Winfrey Defense Fund are presenting the flirtations on Saturday, February 22nd. Uh, for more information, 988-4620. Uh, uh, Great. We're out of here. Thanks yeah. for watching Program Pride. See ya. Bye. Bye.